With summer weather finally upon us, many Americans are hoping it could also help slow the coronavirus outbreak. A number of states are now relaxing virus-related restrictions just as the warmer weather is creating more opportunities to head outdoors. But experts advise caution since the relationship between increased temperatures and COVID-19 still requires extensive research. CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Baradelli joins me now. Hi, Jeff. Great to see you. First off, what do we know about the link between warm weather and the coronavirus? And how does being outdoors impact someone's chances of contracting the virus? So what we do know and what we've seen through a lot of research, there's been a lot of research, but there needs to be a lot more research because obviously the testing period is not very long, right? If you're doing an experiment, you'd like years, not just a few months to do it. But, you know, collectively, all these studies show that there seems to be a component of warmth and humidity and UV radiation that does limit the transmission and spread of this virus. So that's some good news. There could be some seasonality as there is uh, with a lot of these type of infectious diseases. Uh, and there was one study that just came out from Harvard University that said once the temperature goes up above, it's actually Harvard and MIT, once the temperature goes up above 77 degrees, the amount of transmission of this virus goes down fairly markedly. Another study found that the optimal conditions for this virus are between around 40 degrees and 62 degrees or so. Uh, but again, these studies are not complete. They don't have a tremendous amount of data because it hasn't been going on for very long. And uh, partially it could also be due to the fact that a lot of um, the countries that have been infected have happened to be in the colder kind of temperate zones, but they also have better testing in those countries, uh, for instance. Uh, so there are a lot of multiple factors that go in. So this warmth, humidity, and UV radiation is a very secondary factor. It's not a primary factor, and it hasn't stopped infection rates totally. It perhaps limited them a little bit in places like Florida, uh, but it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't get rid of it by any means. The overriding factor is proximity of people, their closeness to each other. So it'll help a little during the summer, but it's not going to get rid of the threat. All right. And Jeff, we are still two weeks away from the official start of hurricane season. But Tropical Storm Arthur has become the first named storm in the Atlantic for this year. How could the hurricane season affect the coronavirus pandemic, the emergency response mm. to it? You know, it just seems to be one more thing we have to worry about now. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to definitely compound it and complicate it. We talk in climate circles. Climate scientists are very concerned about the com uh, compound threats that are posed by climate change, by you know, hurricane seasons that are above normal. First of all, I should tell you, we are expecting a way above normal season this year, uh, partially due to the fact that the Atlantic Ocean is very warm right now, and, and especially in the development region. We call it the main development region. And also because we, we may see a La Nina form in the Pacific. And almost every La Nina that forms in the Pacific correlates to an active season in the Atlantic. So the, the forecasts are generally between 15 and 20 named storms. The average is 12. Penn State says close to 20. Uh, it looks like La Nina is becoming more likely to form sometime in the fall. That would probably boost numbers a little bit. So that's the first part of the equation. We do think we're going to see uh, an above normal hurricane season. The second thing is, you know, it, it's hard enough for local and, and state and national officials to deal with COVID-19. Add another disaster on top of that, and it's really going to complicate matters. Um, I don't think that any country and any local community is ready for all these multiple disasters. We expect that to get worse and worse in a warmer climate where we see more intense fires. We see uh, larger outbreaks of disease. We see stronger hurricanes. So it's something that we're very worried about. And unfortunately, we're about to get a test case of it on Wednesday uh, the Bay of Bengal right now has a cyclone that is an equivalent to Category 5 hurricane. It's going to be making landfall Tuesday night and Wednesday in India and in Bangladesh. And those countries are the most prone countries to these hurricane-like storms, more so than any other countries in the world because they're so low-lying and because a, a lot of the population, unfortunately, doesn't have the resources that other populations around the world do. There's going to be likely some devastating storm surge, some devastating uh, rain flooding, and over a million people are being uh, evacuated right now in India. Uh, there are a lot of refugee camps, especially in Bangladesh. We've talked about that a lot over the past several years in the news. 
There's already been uh, some reported cases in these refugee camps of COVID-19. And when you have to evacuate, first of all, the, the refugee camps are not a good place anyway uh, for people to be, obviously, in any situation, especially right now. When you start to cram all these people, take them out of their homes, which they need to be, by the way, because this danger, this hurricane is so dangerous, the cyclone is so dangerous. But then you cramp them in, in, in more confined quarters because of shelters. You know, we're about to see this unfold real time, unfortunately, um, Tuesday night and Wednesday. We're going to have to all just pray for those folks. So Wednesday is going to be the, the worst of it, Jeff. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it's a Cat 5 right now. We think it's probably going to be a Cat 3 when it makes landfall. But to have a Cat 5 pushing all that storm surge water from the Bay of Bengal north, even if it were to decrease, kind of like Hurricane Katrina was a Cat 5 over the Gulf of Mexico, it decreased to a Cat 3, but Hurricane Katrina still had storm surge of 25 feet. So even if it does decrease its intensity, it's still going to come in with some wicked storm surge. You know, back in the 1970s, these types of storms in India and Bangladesh would kill, and I'm not kidding here, two, three, four, 500,000 people. That won't happen now because technology is better. People have cell phones. The warning gets out. These governments are much better at preparing people. The, the, the amount of, of, of casualties will be a lot, a lot, lot lower, but still it goes to show you how vulnerable these nations are. So this is something we have to watch very closely. Absolutely. Our hearts go out to them and hope that they are prepared as best they can. Well, Jeff Berardelli, thank you so much for being with us and telling us about the weather related dangers ahead. It's all kind of related, though, isn't it? Uh, but thank you so much for that.